About two months ago, Facebook started a new show called the Facebook Five. And in this show, they would answer five questions from Facebook users and creators. The first episode was from the head of Facebook, Tom Allison. And the second episode just released yesterday from Helen Ma, the head of Facebook monetization and more. This is the video that we've been waiting on for quite a while now. And most of the questions were pretty basic and there wasn't a lot of new information there at all. Besides maybe one or two things she said that I will share with you in just a moment but I need you to do me a huge favor if you're still watching and you haven't left this video yet. Even if you don't watch the rest of this video, hit the like button on this video so that the YouTube algorithm boosts it because I want to make sure that if not Helen Ma, then at least someone on the product development team in Meta sees this video because in the second half of this video, we're going to share some ideas that I've got from other creators and myself about how Meta can improve their monetization tools to make them better for creators and also just to become more creator friendly in general. So, go ahead and hit the like button and then listen to what Helen Ma had to say about Facebook monetization. Hi, I'm Helen Ma, Senior Director of Product and Head of Facebook Monetization. And I'm here to answer your top five questions about earning money on Facebook. Violating our policies is the main reason why you could lose access to monetization or if you otherwise meet the eligibility criteria but aren't approved to join the program. First, you must follow our community standards. These apply to everyone on Facebook. Generally, these are pretty common sense and well-intentioned creators don't have a hard time following them. On top of the community standards, you must follow our partner and content monetization policies. These are designed to help you craft your content so that businesses can advertise in or on your content. Let me pause the video right there because what she just said was brand new to me, but the content monetization policy violations and the partner monetization violations are designed so that advertisers can advertise on your content. Meaning that if your content violates these policies, they can't place ads on the content and therefore they're going to hit you with a policy violation and restrict you from monetization. And I think part of it is because every piece of content that you upload that they can't place an ad on, they lose money. And then you have other hidden costs that they have where they have to pay third party people to review content. They have to keep the system up that's constantly monitoring for this content. All of that stuff costs them. So these policy violations function to help keep people in line with what the platform wants and needs to actually remain profitable. Now I'll go one step further and I'll give you a clearer definition of these two different policies because they're quite different. So here we are looking at the content monetization policies and something I want you to notice is that it focuses on prohibited formats such as static videos, meaning you can't upload a photo as a video, static image polls, slideshows of images, looping videos, text montages, embedded it adds and so if we look right here most of this has to do with videos so if you get a content monetization policy violation look at your reels and the videos you've uploaded first the second part is prohibited behaviors and so engagement bait soliciting engagement and then you have restricted categories debated social issues this one's very tricky so if you have very strong political issues and you want to monetize around that it's probably not the best idea because they're going to be very strict on you with that tragedy or conflict, objectionable activity, strong language, explicit content, and then you have prohibited categories such as misinformation and misleading medical information. We know what this was about. This was about, you know, CV-19, but the misinformation content that has been rated false by a third party fact checker, the third party fact checkers, uh, I think they're on vacation at Facebook because there is so much untrue, false misinformation on Facebook that people are creating purely for the sake of engagement to earn money. And I don't want to get into that right now because that's completely beyond the scope of this video. But now I want you to look at the partner monetization policies and you'll immediately see that these are completely different from the content monetization policies. These are things like create content on an eligible surface, reside in an eligible country, follow our community standards, which is the heart and soul of this, follow our content monetization policies. A little redundancy here, share authentic content. This is another big one. Share original content. Authentic content is true content as opposed to misinformation. Original content is content that you create. Authentic engagement, follow our payment terms, pages, groups, and events terms, develop and establish 
office presence. Follow our rules for politicians and governments. Only connect to entities that follow our policies. So if you connect to a third party app that doesn't follow their policies, then you can be restricted with your monetization for this. So if you happen to get a monetization policy violation, go to both of those pages and just read through the documentation to see what you may have done. And as you read through it, something will come to mind most likely. If your content violates any policies, we will inform you within the app and also via email. You can also check professional dashboard or Meta Business Suite home to see if you have any new violations. If you believe you've been wrongly demonetized, you can appeal the decision. Now, we know navigating monetization restrictions has been frustrating for some creators. So we're putting more focus this year to provide better notice, information, and guidance. Something I really hope Meta does is just tell people what they did wrong. And I'll admit, this is something that no platform is really that good at. YouTube has just now started to move in that direction, but it will go a long way in educating creators and getting them comfortable with what they can and cannot do on Facebook by just letting them know this piece of content was a problem. But now let's see what someone who's over Facebook monetization says about how to get an invite from the Facebook performance bonus, because there are a lot of videos out there talking about ways to get an invite, but now we can finally hear from the head of Facebook monetization, how to get an invite to the Facebook performance bonus. And even though I don't believe she specifically mentions it in this video, I do believe that her answer applies to ads on reels as well. Pages and profiles with professional mode turn on are eligible to be invited to these programs. If you are on a Facebook profile and you haven't turned on professional mode yet, that's something you can do as a first step towards monetization. Beyond that, the key is to keep posting original content, reels, photos, text posts, all count. Keep at it, grow your followings, and keep an eye out for an invitation. Invitations are sent in the app. A few things that she didn't say explicitly, but I do believe she said implicitly. Number one, there are no guarantees that you're going to get invited to the Facebook performance bonus. This is something that we've always said. Number two, after turning on professional mode, which is a given, you have to start posting content and getting noticed. And one other thing that I'll add is that even though she says that you want to start posting content and building engagement and I do agree with her that you should start doing that it doesn't guarantee that you're going to get an invite there's a creator in my community who has an awesome Instagram awesome Facebook page very engaged very large following and it was months before she finally got invited to the performance bonus program and in my opinion she should have had it months ago and then on the other side there are people who barely post on Facebook and who have old pages they have not logged into for years that are being invited to the Facebook performance bonus program. And so I think that as far as the implementation of this program, there could be a little more transparency as to how people get invited. Maybe turn it into a standard monetization tool, which is something that we've expected Meta to do eventually. And so the inconsistency in the invites to the program lead me to think that it's probably better for Meta. And if you're listening Meta, this is definitely for you, that the performance bonus and ads on real become standard monetization tools just like in-stream ads once you figure out the metrics and you figure out how to remain profitable but also make creators happy one of the main benefits i think that will come out of setting eligibility requirements on these two different programs in the future is that it kind of functions like quality control if a creator can meet those qualifications and become eligible for the program then they've demonstrated that they're able to build an audience they're able to get their reach up without Meta's help. They're able to do this independently and therefore they deserve to be paid for their work. But when you just invite someone to get paid who hasn't worked for it, who's done absolutely nothing for it, who knows nothing about content creation, you end up with a lot of the problems that we're running into on Facebook. There's a post going viral right now on Facebook written by Tiani Kardashian. If I didn't pronounce your name right, please forgive me. This may not be on Meta's radar, but this post is a community piece that sums up what a lot of people in the Facebook community are feeling right now. The biggest mistake Facebook did was allowing any and everyone to put their profile in professional mode and not having certain credentials for them to prove that they are a content creator, have talent, or even the sheer charisma to carry the title. This is why setting eligibility requirements on the performance bonus on ads on reels works because it increases the quality of the content. And I don't know the financials of Meta, but I do believe that it could possibly put them in a position to where it can pay people who are in these programs a little more to make them happier.
And the biggest mistake actual content creators who work hard and actually have talent, businesses, and charisma did was reveal the program anyways, which made any person feel like they could easily make money with no skills and stealing other people's hard work. And this is where the real problem starts. And then after they stole it, the original post gets 600 likes while the stolen posts go viral. And the really bad part is that Facebook has no protection for the original content creator. Creators. And this is a huge problem on Facebook. Instagram has direct replacement. If you're an aggregator or content curator on Instagram and you're just gathering other people's videos and posts and reposting it to grow your account, they're going to start looking for the original content and then replace the aggregated content with the original content. So picture this, you post a video, someone sees your video, they steal it, they try to repost it instantly, and let's say the system picks it up and it starts running out there. Well, as soon as the system picks up, hey, that's not the original content. The timestamp on this piece of content is at this time, it's a few hours later. This is the original content. They're gonna take your original content and then put it in place of that other piece of content so that you get the reach, the reactions, the engagement, engagement and hopefully in the future the monetization that you deserve for the content that you create because original content is what keeps these platforms lively it's what keeps them fresh and it keeps them with a high engagement score and builds their brand equity if you just have a small group of people creating original content and then everyone else aggregating you just start seeing the same thing over and over just cut up two or three times that's boring people leave the platform and i think that meta knows this that's why they're doing it at instagram and i know Know that they test a lot of things at Instagram first because it's a smaller platform. They can tweak it there before they bring it and roll it out to 3 billion people on Facebook. But hopefully something like direct replacement comes to Facebook because I want you to look at some of these comments, Meta. Well, you know what? We can just look at how Meta AI summarizes this conversation. Commenters agree that Facebook's lack of regulation and verification for content creators enables theft and misuse of original content and that actual creators with talent and charisma are overshadowed by unskilled individuals individuals who steal their work. So pause the screen, read the comments if you want, but I'm just going to sum it up for you. The first comment is just somebody saying, be glad you're a Facebook creator. You're getting paid. You're moving up in the world. It's enough room for everybody. Basically, so what people are stealing your content? If you're that good, get a marketing job, right? Listen to what the creator responds back. I'm not being paid, so I'm not grateful. And that's the point. However, people are getting paid and going viral for my work. And that's a problem. In Meta, that is a problem. Why is Tiani Kardashian not in the program? 51,000 followers. And I can almost guarantee you that this page has reached that's in the millions and has been that way for a while. This is cooking with Tiffany. She has 16,000 followers and listen to what she had to say. One time a follower told me someone was taking my recipe videos and reposting. Come to find out had an entire page with more followers than me. In other words, probably making more money than me with my own content. It's so annoying. I'm just a stay at home mom trying to make a side hustle and people will take your your work. I don't know those creators personally, and I've never spoken to them directly, but Meta, I really hope that you do something about this because this is annoying and exasperating for the people on your platform who are creating original content. They're doing what you ask. They're giving you content that you can place ads on. They're keeping people on the platform, but other people are stealing their content, reposting it and getting paid for it. But what's probably even more damaging than all of that is that they're not getting the brand recognition. People aren't getting to know them because they're discovering the content through another account. And so they're not following the creator. They're not building a relationship with the creator. And a lot of times these creators have other monetization strategies in place. And so for someone to steal their content, repost it, and then distribute it themselves completely undermines their business model. So Meta, please help Facebook creators with stricter guidelines, regulations, and technology around original content like Instagram is doing now. Instagram two eligibility requirements for the performance bonus and ads on reels. And I know you guys have already said that memes and other unoriginal repurposed content is going to draw a lower payout, but maybe it needs to be lower so that we can bring the theft down because it's only increasing and no one's talking about it. And even when it comes to in-stream ads and Facebook monetization, if a video is obviously repurposed and it wasn't filmed by the person posting it, there's no way if the original video is on your platform 
they should be getting more reach, more engagement, and earning more money than the original piece of content, all things being equal. I know that it's possible, but I really find it hard to believe that it's probable that a repurposed video would be more engaging than the original video. Like I get it, some creators are good at adding their own spin, especially with storylines where they cut in with their own dialogue and they truly make it an original piece of content. But the others who are just editing, adding captions and other light work, no. And maybe you already have systems in place to deal with all of these different types of repurposed content and content theft and so forth. And it's just my lack of knowledge about them. But right now, creators on the platform don't see them working in their behalf. And I think it would do a lot for Facebook creators if they saw Facebook supporting them in this way. But now let's finish listening to Helen Ma. Before I answer this, note that Facebook has evolved our payout model to better reward creators based on the performance of their content. That means the more engaging the content is, the more creators can earn. We want to simplify monetization by helping creators focus on what they do best, making great content, rather than optimizing for an ad placement. Now, to answer the question, we do not have a fixed rate that we pay per view or like. There are a few factors that influence payouts, such as originality of the content and the quality of engagement it generates. Ultimately, our goal is to reward creators for quality original content that sparks meaningful engagement with their audiences. So let's review that very briefly. Number one, they do have a new performance-based pay model for in-stream ads, ads on reels, and the Facebook performance bonus. And the reason they've done this is to simplify payouts and to also put you in a space where you can focus on creating content that's engaging rather than being suitable for ad placement. Although if your content is not suitable for ad placement, it's most likely going to violate a content or partner monetization policy. We talked about that earlier. So the earlier segment and this segment kind of complement each other and go together in a weird way. But something else we want to talk about are the factors that go into how much money you actually make. And what she said was, is the originality of the content and the quality of the engagement have a lot to do with it. So we've already talked about the originality of the content and hopefully you already hit the like button to boost this video with the YouTube algorithm in hopes that somebody on the meta product development team sees this video, watches it and takes some of these considerations into account. And the second element that determines how much you get paid is the quality of the engagement. She didn't give us much to go on, but I do believe that the quality of the engagement is going to have a lot to do with the time spent on platform because that's how just about every platform works. The longer you keep people on the platform, the happier you make the platform. And the word that kind of sums this all up is satisfying the viewer. So how satisfying is your content? Are people reacting to it? Are people having meaningful discussions beneath your content? Are people giving you stars on that content? Because those are signals that the algorithm looks at. Are people sharing your content through Messenger or copying the link and sending it through text messages? That's really big on the algorithm right now people sharing the content. That's something they look at a lot. So when you get ready to create your content before you post it on Facebook, think about how you can increase the time spent with the post. Think about ways you can craft the content angles you can take that will get people to start conversations. Think about ways that you can get people to share this with their friends and family. Think about different things that you can do that will give your content a higher quality score. I'm not going to do it now, but in a previous video, I showed you guys how the ad system is very similar to the organic content distribution system. And when you run Facebook ads, after your ad has been shown for a while and has been in front of enough people, they will give your ad a quality score, a relevancy score. And that score is basically telling you how good your ad is, how good is your creative, how good is the content you're paying to place in front of people. The higher that score, the higher your engagement is going to be and the more money you're likely going to make in your business. If you translate that to the organic side and you think about hitting that mark on those things we just discussed, you have people sharing it, having discussions beneath the post, reacting to it, spending spending time reading the posts and so forth, then you're probably going to draw a stronger payout, especially when it's original content. And that's a beautiful lead into this next segment because I made a post in my Facebook group. If you could speak directly to those in charge of monetization and meta, what recommendations would you personally make that would improve?
improve monetization in your opinion. Of course, we would all like more money. So please don't state the obvious. The first comment on this post is a great follow up to the quality rankings of your content from the ad system to the content system. And this is what one person said. They wish that there was some type of ranking system for their posts, kind of like how YouTube does. You can see how your video ranks compared to your last 10 videos, whether it's a one of 10, a two of 10, three of 10, like how many views you've got in this amount of time, the watch time, etc. And so if there was more transparency around the quality ranking of a post, then creators can optimize around their best content instead of waiting for the end of the month to find out what's their best post and then compare it and then try to optimize 30 days later, they can do so rapidly and get better results overall. Something else they mentioned is the recommendation of original content. A lot of creators feel as though original content is not being promoted on the Facebook platform. And I know that the Facebook Reels ranking system was developed so that original content would rise to the top. But in my own consumption of Facebook Reels, what I'm commonly seeing is that the people who are leading the way, the big creators on Facebook, take up a lot of the space on Facebook Reels. And every so often, I'll run across a Reel from someone who doesn't have a large following. But the other side of that coin, especially when it comes to Reels, is that it has to be high quality content. And so even though the system is meant to help you discover new creators, the fact that it has to be high quality content almost ensures that you will not discover any new creators because it's very difficult for new creators and people with small audiences to come out of the gate creating high quality content unless they have a background in videography. Another thing that creators are looking for is more support when it comes to restrictions. People are getting restricted and then they try to contact Meta and it's very difficult. And I understand that Meta is massive and if they were answering restrictions all day, they would be burning through cash. And I think that a little transparency in that department could go a long way with supporting creators, but also saving money because there's less people that you have to support just by letting them know what they did wrong. They can go delete the post. And just as a little asterisk, something else I would add right here, because I know that Meta is working on Llama and they're developing it and working on it being the most capable open source artificial intelligence in the market. I don't know exactly what they're doing, but I do believe they have some form of reinforced learning from human feedback right now. And so when the AI flags something on the platform, I've seen people get flagged for some very wild things dealing with children and other things that I'm not gonna mention right now in the video. And when I looked at the screenshots of the post, it was the furthest thing from it. The AI got it wrong. And so especially when it comes to AI flagging content, if there could be some human support, at least in that regard, you're spending money to support the creator, but you're also improving the AI system. And so it's a win for the creator and it's also a win for Meta because instead of just stonewalling creators and saying there's nothing they could do about it and not listening to them, which inadvertently is training your AI on bad data, you're actually improving your AI system, which is gonna lead the way for Meta in the future in many regards. And one small thing that I like to add in here, I wish that there was an easier way for people to add creators they follow to their favorites. And this is just a social media issue in general. On the one side, I do understand that creators need to understand that just because you have a following of 100,000 people, that does not mean you're the only person they're following on the same platform. And that does not mean that you're entitled to reach 100,000 people every time you post. Each post is judged on its own merits and of various other factors that have to do with that person or that follower and how they're using the platform at the moment. Maybe they're no longer interested in the topic that you post about and so forth. But there are some users who are more intentional with their follow and they intend for their follow to have more meaning and significance. There's already a solution for this called favorite, but favorites is buried a little deep in the settings on Facebook and Facebook has a lot of settings and the average user just doesn't know how to navigate all of those settings and they don't have the time or patience to. And so maybe after a person presses the follow button, a star can appear or you can have a star there where they can automatically set a person as a favorite so that they always show up in their timeline because I know now that when someone chooses to unfollow, there's a list of options they could choose before they actually hit the unfollow button. They could choose to see less of that person and so forth. But on the flip side, the option to see more of a person intentionally is kind of buried. This next suggestion for Meta is actually not my own. This one actually comes from Nikki Saunders. She's a huge creator on Instagram, threads, and just Meta in general. She also has a YouTube channel she just started a few months ago. So look her up, Nikki Saunders. Go check her out. Show her some love. Great 
content. But this is what she said. I'm surprised Meta never took this play from TikTok. Create their own video editing app like CapCut. And that's a good idea. And there are a lot of reasons why Meta probably never did it. But if they did create their own video editing app and they invested more in the filters, the green screens, and all of the things that TikTok really does well to make creating these pieces of content, these meme videos and everything else so easy for regular people, I think it really would go a long way in helping people who are getting started as creators on Facebook or Instagram actually develop their skills and grow faster while also keeping them inside of the meta ecosystem, which is something that Apple has shown us is very good for business. So recently, Facebook has rolled out Meta Verified for businesses, and we can see just by looking at these prices that Meta is not afraid of actually monetizing their platform in ways that they failed to do so in the past because they've realized they've left a lot of money on the table over the years because they've given us so much for free for so long. The decisions that Elon made and a couple of other things in the market kind of open the door for this to happen. It's here now. And so it's something that we have to deal with. If they're going to monetize Facebook, then there's one thing I really hope they do that I believe would make Meta a lot of money. If you look at my screen, you can see that I can create a Facebook group and it can be public or it can be private. But one thing that it can't be is paid. And people have been using private Facebook groups for years for their coaching programs, their courses and all type of stuff. And now with the right of community platforms like Circle.so, Mighty Networks, Go High Level, School, and so many others, if Meta were to create a paid version for Facebook groups, where a creator through their Meta Verified or Verified business account could also set up a paid subscription to a Facebook group. And inside of that group, they could host course content. Now, of course, the UI and the UX of the Facebook group would need to be tweaked just a little bit because guides are pretty good, but they need to be tweaked just a little bit. And I know there are going to be some people who kick against this to say it's a bad idea, but there are a lot of people who will really take advantage of it because a lot of the coaches, consultant, course creators, they get their customers and their clients from Facebook and they send them away from Facebook. But for some creators, this puts them in a position where they can cancel their community membership, where they're paying a hundred dollars or more a month. They can cancel Kajabi and all they really need is an email service provider because they're doing all of their lead generation on Facebook and they're sending people directly to the Facebook group where they can join and pay a monthly fee. These are just ideas and very rough ideas at best. They're not worked out all the way, but I do believe that there's a lot of things that Meta can do to really support creators and also grow their business at the same time. And hopefully somebody at Meta sees this video and they take some of these ideas into consideration. Most of them will probably never see the light of the day and they've probably already thought about these things and chose not to do them for various financial reasons or other reasons that are beyond our limited scope of knowledge. But if Facebook is the platform that you've chosen to create content for and build your audience. I wish you will. And I hope they do the best thing for you because without content creators, all of these platforms are nothing more than glorified websites. So you're valuable. Your content is valuable. It deserves to be protected. And I think that creators are going to gravitate towards the platform that supports them the most because if no one at Meta listens to this video and takes the things that I'm saying into consideration, and if they don't start addressing the grievances that people in their community are actually telling them, then social media money monetization won't just be dead for 99% of creators. It'll be dead for all of the creators on Facebook because they will leave the platform and they will go elsewhere, especially if they have to continually watch people steal their content and monetize it while they're making nothing because the programs are invitation only. And I'm almost willing to guarantee you that you'll see a completely different attitude in the creators on Facebook if they at least feel supported, like genuinely supported. If you got value out of this video or you think that any of the ideas that I I've suggested will make you a happier creator on Facebook, then please hit the like button so that it pushes it on the YouTube algorithm and we can get this in front of the right people. And as always, take care, have a great evening, and I'll see you in the next video.